as early as 2000, the world has been warned that there's going to be a water crisis. And that water crisis will not be about physical scarcity of water, but about water governance. So uh, why is there going to be a water crisis? Okay, the demand for surface water is increasing due to population increase and urbanization. On the other hand, the supply of surface water is dwindling due to degraded watersheds. Supply of potable water is also declining due to pollution. So for now, this uh, scarcity of water supply during the dry season and El Nino and the excessive water supply during the rainy seasons and La Nina, future water supply seriously threatened by climate change, and the increasing competition of scarce water supply will now lead to water conflicts, and without effective water governance mechanisms, the Philippines is likely to face the water crisis. Thus, we need to analyze the current state of water governance in the country. So in our EIDR project, we try to understand how and what is water governance in the Philippines. And to do this, uh, we gathered primary data through surveys, focus group discussions, and key informant interviews. We had two levels of analysis, the national level as well as the watershed level. Uh, we interviewed about 300 water managers from the water districts, from the Irrigators Association, local government units, as well as the community-based water systems. We also interviewed at the watershed level households, enterprises, farmers, and institutional agents to understand how they manage and how they uh, allocate water. We have these key questions. Uh, what are the knowledge of our water actors about water loss and water rights? What are the rules in water allocation and conflict resolution? And as well, we wanted to characterize the water governance structure of the country. See, there are several of these um, actors, and so we needed to understand how this water governance across the sectors would be. So the results of our study showed the following. So in terms of the water law, most water managers do not know of water rights. The issuance process of water rights differ from law to practice, and conflict resolution mechanisms are mostly via customary means. So in terms of water pricing, there's not a uniform basis at all. Water is provided for free in community-based systems. On the other hand, in the, when the local government unit is the delivery of the water supply of households, price determination is by the local legislative body with no scientific basis. On the other hand, the water districts, who are the more formal institutions, have more predictable water tariffs that aim for partial or full cost recovery. And in terms of water administration, so most of our water organizations are organized by political boundary. But we know that water flows freely. They don't respect political boundaries. Thus, when we say water planning at the local government unit, this becomes baseless. Water use across sectors is governed by various institutions. So the National Irrigation Administration governs the um, uh, irrigation water uh, at the um, agriculture sector. The Local Water Utilities Administration governs the domestic water supply. Um, and we have, of course, the National Water Resources Board, which is the, the regulatory agency for water. But all of these are disjointed organizations. Okay? They don't talk to one another. They are not vertically uh, related nor horizontally related at all. Cross-sector planning is therefore non-existent. Most of all, data needed for planning is also not available. Our water institutions are much polarized systems from the most formal to the informal organizations with varied water administration mechanisms. In such, uh, we need to also respect the formal as well as the informal structures of our water governance. So um, we also tried to understand, or we have put 
put forward um, initiatives that can be taken at the national level as well as at the watershed level. At the national level, um, we have dialogued with the legislative body of the country to talk about transboundary issues. So what are these? So these are water that are transferred from one use, one sector, to the other, such as from irrigation to industry or to supply of condominium. We don't have any direct or straight policy along that concern. We also propose that we will have water resource centers, and these are the centers that could house uh, water data that can be used for policy and planning, both at the national level and at the local level. And these water resource centers, we propose to be housed at the state universities and colleges. We also emphasize that watershed should be used as water planning, uh, basis for water planning, uh, because it's the physical boundary of water. So um, we also would like to put forth um, some initiatives that we did for improved water governance at the watershed level. Uh, one of these is that um, the project built capacities of the actors uh, within the watershed for improved surface water governance. And um, what we did was to train them on a good uh, on water resource management and planning at the watershed level. So at this time, we have produced water management plans based on a watershed. And we also have helped them um, do investment proposals um, and a protocol for an adaptive collaborative water governance was also produced. So we have now um, in the study watersheds, um, we have uh, watershed-based water governance that is more effective because we have strengthened their governance um, bodies such as the river councils and the watershed management councils with the University of the Philippines constituent units performing the major facilitating role. 